Kia ora. Um, just gonna uh, ask someone asked me to do a review on um, the Huawei Pocket Wi Fi router. Um, pretty alright device um, for just my overview perspective. It's a genuinely alright device. I mean, it's not the best out, it's not the best, but it does what I want it to do. So Here's the device. Mm. So these the uh, this we LEDs, the power button. Over here you can peel this back, and if you've brought if you've got additional, um, which I don't, so additional um, antennas, you can put them in there. Here's your charger. Um, if we open this device, because you can open it. Just a second, here we go. Let's see, these the lid, battery. Take the battery out. Over here, we've got your SIM card, and I've got a 32 gig SD card in here. And this is the inf the default the information that comes when you first get the device. I've changed all of that, so none of this applies except for the username as admin. But you need to know my custom password my SSID that I've changed and also the Wi-Fi key that I've changed to and it's hidden so I've got to actually connect you myself so without further ado I'll turn the device on and I'll go through I will go I won't go through the web service or the web browser I'll go through the Huawei Highlink app We'll be using an S4 for this um, demonstration. Um, it's on inverted colours, so the app the apps actually don't look like this. But I am just. But first of all, we'll just go settings on this phone. I've got to hurry up because the battery is going flat. And. There it is, Bladens 2G, 3G, 4G, connect. So that's connected. Yes, so here's the app. One device connected. Two degrees is my carrier and the battery percentage and the plan, which is 99% left of it at uh, 10 gigs a month, which is good. Over here we've got battery, which gives you the battery status, and also smart smart power saving and yada yada. Shortcuts, you got your my messages, which is you know, Texas uh, mobile data and data roaming, USSD codes, which is um, another way of ringing but without thing. Um, SMS, all the SMSs on the device. So it's a SIM card. Storage. This gives you access to the storage on the SD card in this. We'll check out music, videos, video music, and also downloaded, which has got UFO documentaries, which probably won't interest a lot of you, which is okay. That's just my thing. And documents and stuff are on there too. Because I also can browse. This app is available for iOS devices, so I can actually manage this. SD card and view documents and list of music without downloading it onto an iPad, which I'm recording off now. So yeah, Wi-Fi extender, which is my one of my favourite things. Which your new Wi-Fi, that's the actual home Wi-Fi that's here. Um, which if I can connect this device directly to it, and this will make a bridge between this and the and the router in the kitchen, and it will also still broadcast the hotspot. So, um, so uh, my device, my S4 will stay connected to this, and then this will, this will, uh, that, that bridge will allow me to use the Wi-Fi here if these devices don't know them, the Wi-Fi. So that's good for, hmm, I, I'd usually use it if, I'd ask the owner to connect this, and uh, maybe I might have friends over that want to use the internet too, but they're too shy to think, so this will, if they're my friends are connected to this too, They'll also have access to the owner's internet as well. 
Um, then we just got scan, which is brings the camera up, and share, which is pretty much what the SD card does. So if you go to settings, you've got my my Wi-Fi, which is the Wi-Fi name and password and security accounts. I oh, know that's network accounts. So that's just um, modify login, password, and logout network 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 network. Cool. Sorry for that. Oh, it's just lagging. Got mobile data enabled. Mobile roaming is enabled. APNs is the internet uh, access point network configuration, which is carrier that gets provided by a carrier, your mobile carrier. Internet access wizard. That's just when you first set the device up. I've set this up for hotels and home routers. So the Wi-Fi extender. Wi-Fi extender again. I just showed you. Wi-Fi mode, so it's at the moment it's 2.4 gigahertz. That's the this phone connected to that. That's connected through 2.4 gigahertz. You can change it to five, but I've left it at four because of the of the network uh, of the older devices. And then you also got mobile network, so that's just you can choose what mobile and um. Networks you want to go on 2G only, 3G or 4G only, or auto, which toggles between three, and you can change the where search for network operator and or select automatically. So yeah, well this phone's actually going to go flat, but I haven't finished showing off what this device can do. So for that part, um, this can also be accessed through a web browser too, which is slightly different, but we won't cover that today. So I'll give that a rest because it's dying. This this is this what else of this device can do. I can also provide an internet access to a lying around modem, which I've got two here, which I'm going to demonstrate. Through lights. First modem, normal house modem. Boom. Welcome to the Fritz box. Um, this is also supports addict devices. Um, so we'll see with my with my current broadband carrier for Homeline, which it's not the one here, it's actually the one out the con one out the country. This is mobile or oh, this router supports um it supports DIC phones which is voice over internet protocol phones, which is the DIC button here. And that's what you use to register. I don't got a handset on me because I haven't signed up to it yet, but that's what you use to register the handset with your modem and this modem has got built-in answering machine uh you could you can divert calls it's, it's it's a smart router and it's also vdsl and adsl input uh DS, dsl line too so but we're going to be using it with a mobile connection it can be used with any mobile connection really if long even a phone as long as you've put, enabled usb tethering so we'll plug this in. Just wait for this modem to boot up. It won't take long. Put that there. Um, well, that's booting up. The second modem, just I'll give you a quick demonstration what that modem's booting up, is this one. This is another Huawei modem. It's a 4G only one. It doesn't support 3G and 2G like this little one. Um, this was the one I actually bought first. And but I, I, I can still use it. It's good for town. It just won't work in the rural areas. That's the only thing because Spark, um, another mo uh, carrier here, uh, another carrier for um, phone company here in New Zealand, um, they have locked the firmware has locked the things to the 4G only network. It's unlocked, so I can stick another SIM in it, which to another carrier, but it won't step it down to 3G and 2G. Where this modem here can act and do what this modem is because this this is a 2.4 plus a 5 gigahertz modem this one and how I was mentioning before that this only is a 2.4 gigahertz or you can change it but you can't have the multi well this is the multi and this is the one I usually connect people to is this router here um this this network is not broadcasting and so that's connected to the USB at the back there's two there's one on the side we'll connect this to the USB input 
here in output because it inputs it, it, it outputs internet and it inputs power to the battery and the internet so when you see this light come on that means that it's got internet the internet connection is established either for a DSL or USB we're going to be establishing it through USB so just getting it's charging at the same time the router um, shouldn't take long because this modem there we go so this modem has been set up to connect to a DSL line and a, a tether for USB if I had a phone like if I connected this phone for USB and tethered it it'll do the same thing but this modem is better to do it with so yeah um, so we'll also try it on this other one just a second I'll unplug that plug this in plug the new router's power supply in the outlet or extension outlet because that's what I'm using I'll grab the USB cable from here Tangle that from there, and we'll plug this modem in here, and the lights are on, we'll plug the USB in here, the USB port is there, there we go, alright, I'll see. I'm not too sure about this modem, I haven't tried it like this before, it's actually the first time, so uh, usually that's supposed to be green. Oh, and it actually does work, wow. Oh no, it's not, it's red. I've probably got to set it up with this modem anyway, where you see this other modem's automatically set, but worth a try, I thought I'd experiment and thing on video but that's all right but that modem still comes in handy anyway because it's got LAN ports on it plus a VoIP phone and a SIM card so I can do the exact same thing <laughs> and I've also got a reset button and the telephone jack and four LAN ports the fourth LAN port is a WAN so I can connect it to a this external network if I've got a LAN available so yeah hope you enjoyed this thing of the pocket router I can do a good thing. I mean, overall, this device works perfectly. Um, I was recently going to buy a Kingston Y drive, which is pretty much a storage device that broadcasts its own Wi Fi network and you know, you just customize it, network name and password. And this does the, what the Kingston Y drive does plus more. So I can connect more devices, not just three. I can connect up to 32. I can bridge, which a wide, a, a, a wide drive can do. This one can do. But also a wide drive doesn't use mobile communication, which this device does. So overall, compared to Kingston wide drive, compared to the Huawei Pocket Router, this wins hands down. Um, and also the USB tethering function and also USB mass storage function too. So yeah, overall it's a winner. Um, not the best, but it, it, it suits what I want it for and my needs, what I need it for. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Until then, sayonara.